Call them highway of Baba John Oil. Salta Masagana. This is Dr. Nagus M. Hotel. Coming with Babylon Makes the Rules. We have a special guest here today. Mr. Kwok Moat from South Sudan. Big time businessman back home who happens to be a Mandela Washington fellow that's been here for five weeks in the city of Des Moines. First time in the U.S. Say hello to the audience, Mr. Quad. <laughs> hello, hello. This is Quad from South Sudan. All right. Yeah. So, thank Go you for welcoming me here. Man, that's wonderful, man. I, I know I met you about five weeks ago, and, and, and uh, you were doing business back home in, in South Sudan. And uh, would you enlighten the audience about what you do? All right. Uh, first of all, thank you for making me come here to do the podcast with you. Uh, my name is Quot Maud. I'm originally from South Sudan, and I'm among the 10 South Sudanese that is representing the nation of South Sudan in Mandela Washington Fellowship. So it's a great honor to be here in the U.S. to represent my country. Uh, this is a very competitive program. Yes. Uh, we had to fight for it. And of course, it is for businessmen or public servants who are doing great to the community. So my job back home, I'm an accountant by profession. I'm a co-founder and a managing partner for A&K Auditors and Consultant Limited. So what we do, we serve NGOs, companies with audit and assurance services, uh, tax advisory, mm -hmm. risk and financial management, and other services that are related with finances. Uh, for this program, I'm more interested in agriculture or agri-tech because we have a plenty of land, but it is unutilized. So my focus is to get the knowledge and apply it back there. I want to feed my family. I need to feed my nation and also create jobs. That is what it is. Yeah. Man, that's a beautiful uh on a, it's, it's a beautiful task that you have before you and um, my prayers I hope and pray that this this trip will be a, a marker to help propel what you're doing back home um, I know um, South Sudan is is a new nation oh yes yes we just celebrated our 12th anniversary this year or nine okay so we're 12 years old very young nation having challenges but we have resilient people we want to make the country succeed but you you're 12 years old but your history is way older than that sure how far back could we go if we look at south sudan first it was a whole sudan yes. it was the biggest nation in african continent mm -hmm had more than 200 uh, languages spoken. They got independence from Britain in 1954. Okay. But then, in 1959, uh, they got into issues because of uh, the resource allocation. Mm -hmm. The southern part was where the resources were, but the northern part was using the resources in developing the north. Okay. So the southern part took arms and rebelled. Okay. Uh, after that, there was an agreement, and uh, the the southern part was given the the position of a vice president, which was later on the, the vice president was assassinated, mm -hmm. uh, and John Garang, by then was a colonel in the army in mm -hmm. Sudan, had some knowledge. A lot of knowledge and hard followers. So in 1986, it 
to rebel against the Sudanese government again because of the same unaddressed issues mm-hmm. of inequality, less development in the South, mm-hmm. yet the resources were in the South. Mm-hmm. Another thing was Islamization of the Southern part. Uh, the Southern part was predominantly Christian and African uh, Traditional. tradition. Yes. yes. And uh, they did not find it fit to yeah. be converted forcefully. Yes. So they also took arm for that. So it had been in war for like over 50 years. Mm-hmm. But the recent war was from 1986 uh, mm-hmm. to 2005. So that is 21 years yes. of uh, war struggle. Yes. So most of the southern Sudanese were to refuge in neighboring countries. Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, Chad, Central Africa Republic, and most of the Southern Sudanese actually traveled to United States as refugees. Most of them are now citizens of the United States. Uh, that is what the struggle ke- uh, brought us. Uh, but we are resilient people. We love our country. So in 2021, mm-hmm. we got our independence. So during 2005 agreement, there was an agreement that we shall have a referendum to decide whether we have to remain as Sudan or the country has to be divided into two. Yes. And in 2010, we had a referendum, an election that 99.8% of the people voted for separation. So we're proud to have our nation as our Sudanese. And with the struggles we're having, we are proud that we will solve them and take the country forward. That's wonderful. That's wonderful, man. I know um, you being a, an accountant and dealing with finance, so you're the money man. And uh, I might need to send some information to you so you can help straighten my money out. Huh? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> No, man. Well, well, since you've been here, well, what, what, uh, and this is your first visit to the United States. Yeah. Oh, uh, tell me something about what you saw, what you like, what you don't like. Oh, my God. The United States is a wonderful country. And, uh, we have learned a lot uh, from the trip. Uh huh. My first time was, uh, actually in a hotel in Washington. Uh huh. So I slept there for nights. I traveled to Des Moines so I had a wonderful experience and uh, most times we have been introduced to different uh, factories or companies that are doing so greatly developing or uh, making uh, America great Mm -hmm. and uh, we hope that everything that is here we can take it and develop also our nations and uh, so far so good I'm learning a lot because the country runs well when there are systems. So uh, we have gone to companies that have systems in place and have learned how to also make my company or other companies that I will be involved at uh, to to improve and to make uh, a great uh, improvement in the country. That's wonderful. Yeah. And now uh, some a lot of people... In the U.S. and uh, elsewhere around the world, might be geographically illiterate, but uh, the Nile River is right in the middle of your country, correct? Yeah. Okay. And um, with with farming, uh, tell me something about what what what's it like farming, especially farming rice in your country? Okay. Uh, farming. It's normally done in subsistent way, uh, which is not a very good way of doing farming. Because uh, <clears throat> there are seasons where like there are natural calamities, yes, uh, which cause a lot of food insecurity. Uh, two years ago, we were hit by floods, which destroyed the farms. And uh, I thought about how about if you produce something that can take longer time even during our natural uh, natural calamities yes uh, we can be able to get food 
if you look at my country, my country is blessed with a lot of natural resources. Uh, one with water. Mm-hmm. The River Nile passes through the whole of South Sudan. And uh, just looking at my village, we actually use the River Nile for drinking, for bathing, for swimming. We do everything in River Nile because mm-hmm. we're just next to the River Nile. So I thought like it was a great idea to have farming in my community. One, it is going to create, uh, to create jobs mm-hmm. and also to feed my community. Uh, recently, we had farms from Israel that were farming in my country, but of course they were implicated for doing other things that were wrong to the, to the country. Mm. But uh, what I realized was that they created a lot of jobs and they also made food accessible to my community. So that is what I'm fighting for because we have natural resources like water mm-hmm. and the great land, fertile land that is in abundance and it's just seated there. No one is doing nothing. What were some of the uh, main staples uh, in, in South Sudan? Um, mainly millet and sorghum. Millet and sorghum. Yeah. Okay. And maize. Yeah. Maize and corn. Yeah. <laughs> I remember as a kid, my, my, my father would, would go... We would go over to Louisiana, f- coming from from Houston, and he would go in uh, down in Louisiana, down Baton Rouge area, and uh, everybody down there they used to have a lot of sorghum syrup. Yeah. And man, I I love man. My grandmother would make the the biscuits, mm. and you put that sorghum syrup on it. Lord have mercy, that food was good. <laughs> it was so Maybe sweet, was good, yeah. man. You know, when you especially when grandma yeah. grandmother cooks. Yeah. Oh man, it, it was, was delicious. Absolutely delicious. <laughs> have you tested uh millet porridge? No, I have not. You should try that. Well, I got a, a good friend here from South Sudan. He's been telling me about how good his mother cooks. Uh, he comes to my house and eat, but he never invites me to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, for the past four years I've been trying to find out what kumbo. 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 I said, man, uh, my folks from Louisiana, I know about gumbo, and I made him some seafood gumbo, and he liked it. He said, man, that is delicious. I like that. And he said, he said, Nagushi, man, you need to get some kumbo. I said, well, man, bring some. Yeah. I don't know if I knew how to make it, you know, but I don't. So, man, so that's you your mama, your you? sister. No, uh, he's almost not going to be my friend anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I invite you to South Sudan to test it. Man, you I, never come back. Uh, man, I probably won't. You won't. I probably won't. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. You I'm telling you, man. Uh, just to stand and be right there on the now. Hmm. Oh, that 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 brings flashbacks because a couple of my friends from South Sudan, they have a very important name that sticks out, and it it stuck me. Toot. 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 Does anybody know anything about toot? Can you tell me something about Tut and where that name comes from? Uh, the name comes from the Nuer tribe. Uh-huh. And uh, I really do not know the meaning, but it is very important meaning because most great people are called Tut. Yeah. So I believe there's some great attachment to that. Okay. Yeah. It's not Nibbler. No. No, 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 no. What about my, my friend named Tut, too, but... Uh, I said, well, King Tut was the wow. king of ancient Egypt. Tut. Yeah. Historically. Okay, now. We are the people of Egypt. Say it again. We are the original people of Egypt. Uh, take a picture of this brother. <laughs> take a picture of this brother. Uh, because if you if you really look at uh, <laughs> even the, the, the diagrams uh-huh. of the first pharaohs. Yes. They have our signs. Yes. If you see the marks which are always in our heads, they're just, we're the, the first people there. Yes. And uh, everything was black in yeah. the northern part. Of course, uh, with the migration, slavery, uh, the invasion of Africa mm-hmm. um, made people to shift. So when ancient Egypt and ancient 
I don't even like to use the nasty name Egypt. Egypt is a Greek name. Yeah. Because ancient Kemet. Kemet. An, an ancient Sudan. Sudan. Yeah. An ancient Nuba. Nuba. Okay. That yeah. is the name of, of where these an, the ancestors of the, origin, the original oh. people yeah. came from there. And you are a descendant yeah. of the ancient. Yes. Man, and that's powerful. Because here in America and throughout the, the, what you would call the Frankfurt School of Thought, uh, the, the Arabs are there trying to tell the world that they are the founders of that civilization. And and they're, by no means, they're no, newcomers. Not newcomers. They're newcomers, and, and, and your people were there from the beginning of time. Yeah. The Bible actually says that we are the first people. In my language, uh -huh. Adam and Eve are called Abuk and Deng. Okay. So we believe like the first people were us. Yes. Yeah. Well, then the archaeologists come back and, and support that as well. Dr. Sheikh Antadio from uh, Senegal. Senegal. Yeah, uh, who's the anthropologist. He, uh, he, 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 he made it clear in, in his studies to show that, that the, the origins of mankind started on the continent of africa right around in the odovor gorge yeah. river odovor gorge valley and also in ethiopia and the, the omo river valley yeah sure because I, I saw just a couple of years ago maybe 10 times moving so fast but years ago a couple of years ago they they stated that the one the bones that they found in the omo river valley was maybe a million years older than the ones that they found in Kenya. Yeah. So, man. So, like you said, the origin of mankind, and I'm looking at the original. Yeah. Respect. Respect, respect original. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> original. Now, man, uh, you, I know you're an accountant. Uh, you, you, you focus, you like agriculture as well. And we're in Iowa, and I was a, the agriculture powerhouse probably um, and, and this just this Midwest is the agriculture powerhouse of, of this nation and and looking how uh, the commercial farms are here in this country in comparison to farming back home what's the difference with uh, not just the, the machinery but um, for instance when you're farming what type of uh, fertilization are you using like a, we normally use uh, the local manure, and uh, recently I went to Ems mm -hmm. uh, to visit a farm called Clayton, Clayton Farm. Mm -hmm. They do an indoor uh, farming, mm -hmm. which is a, a greenhouse kind of technology. And I was so impressed that uh, this thing, this technology can overcome many of uh, natural disasters. You can still farm when even things are doing badly. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing I believe because we have natural resources, we have money to, to, to import all this technology and do things right. Uh, I believe there's a lot to learn. But the thing is, if we share the knowledge that we have gotten here with the people back home, uh, things will really greatly improve. So I'm looking at other places to also learn. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to John Deere uh, to look at the machinery and also went to the test farm. We went to Manning mm -hmm. and we went to to a farm. In so, Manning, Iowa. Yeah, in Manning, Iowa. And there was a lot of things to learn. Putting in all the factors that all these farmers put in place for them to succeed as farmers. Uh, it's my first time doing farming, but I'm having great aspirations in, uh, in doing that because I've seen challenges. Mm -hmm. I've seen challenges in my country, and I believe it only needs an idea mm -hmm. to solve a challenge. And as someone who is educated, mm -hmm. we're always solution makers always give solutions and coming here it's a great big deal uh just like my great we call him the founding father of south sudan mm -hmm. dr john garang he 
He was in Iowa State University. Okay. He did his PhD. Okay. In agriculture in a, in Iowa State. And when he said he said a word that has stuck that is stuck in people's minds mm-hmm. and that is like we can only develop this country through agriculture when we provide food for the people everything will fall in place so we are taking his advice because agriculture is the backbone of every economy looking at Iowa feeling almost the whole of United States i believe i can change the narrative that we should not depend on other people we can produce food for ourselves and make the country succeed that's beautiful man you know one thing that i've noticed here since I, I, i'm i'm a native i was born here in the us but uh, uh, the last 28 years i've been living here in iowa but one thing that I've, i'm constantly hearing about it, the farmers is is the drainage of of the artificial um fertilizers that that spill into the rivers and how it, it taints the rivers and and then the quality of water goes down tremendously but back in in South Sudan you don't have that problem we do not have that problem if you see South Sudan history we have been much in war mm-hmm. and the land has not been utilized well so the farming even things grow without applying the fertilizers it's a great gift mm-hmm. we have plenty of land we have a population of 12 million living in south sudan and uh, the vast land is just sitting out there okay. so we as young people have a responsibility of making use of the natural resources of the country and one of them is agriculture so when i go back home it's a big deal for me to make every plan that i have to be implemented so it's a big thing to me i want to be an inspiration to people through this and looking in your eyes i know you will i will i know you will because you you've been obligated before you got here sure yeah because i know it, it was a hard task even just to get here yeah cuz listening to to you gentlemen that I've been talking to for these past couple of weeks I know that you are uh privileged in comparison to some of the other people in your country and but you made it here and I my hopes and prayers is that you uh, take what you learn and and use what you need throw away the stuff that you don't you know just like my dad said you eat the fish and throw away the bones boy don't eat the bones okay yeah. it take the fish and throw away the bones and take it back home yeah man man i just enjoy you go ahead tell me something else man i'm so privileged to to have you as my coach because oh, you've been so helpful to me uh some of the contacts that you've given me uh i'm using them to expand my knowledge and get whatever that brought me here. So, it's a privilege to have you in my team to make the dream come. True. So, I will always remember you for that. And of course, when I go back home, I know that I have a home here because of you. Man, you come to the house and I'm going to feed you some gumbo. Oh. <laughs> you can, you I'll have to that. teach you how to cook gumbo. <laughs> man, hey, it, it's just it's just something bad just just to think about that uh um I'm, and I'm looking at the large population of South Sudanese that we have here in Des Moines. It's not a large large population, but there's a good group uh because I I've met people who are uh Nuba, who are Dinka, who are Nua, people who are Choruk, you, you know, and and it's like you know everybody. Man, yeah. man, that be we go back to the hood and go meet some of the bros. We hey They, they know me. <laughs> they know me. Your brother. Yeah. Hey, man. Uh, even I, I used to tell some of my classmates when uh, I was doing the undergraduate study at Texas Southern University, a historical black college, and we had a large population of of, of students from Africa, and and all the African Americans would say, 
man, why you always hang out with those Africans? I said, well, hell, if you are African, man. They said, no, man, but you hang out with those Africans. I said, hey, man, I already know y'all. I know what you about, what you doing. Let, let me talk to some of the brothers and sisters from back home to see what's going on where we don't get a lot of information yeah. about what's going on in Africa. The media shows us what's going on in Africa from most of the time from a negative sense. That is true. You know, when uh, showing plight or uh, wars or famine and, and negative stuff, but not the good side. Yeah. Of what's going on? Uh, it's one thing that is affecting Africa and spoiling the reputation of Africa. A lot of good things that are happening back home. Mm -hmm. We are one of the happiest people uh, that the world do not talk about. Uh, the thing is, it goes back to the journalists. Sometimes they report the negative part, but they do not want to report the good part. Yeah. So we do not know their their logic behind that. And also the international community mm -hmm. looks at us like uh, we're always violent, but we are peaceful. Well, so the thing is, there's a good part of Africa. The greater part is the people. Yes. And we are lovely people. So one incident should not just generalize the whole of Africa. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know that we have challenges, but these challenges shall come to pass. Mm. But I have a, a good friend of mine I met here at, at about 25 years ago, and and he is uh, at first he didn't know too much about African studies, and, and once we met, I started communicating to him and giving him books and other information that I had in the past, and he constantly kept reading, and just uh, three years ago, uh, he went to Egypt. His brother from Des Moines, his folks was from Alabama. He went to Egypt and he was in northern Egypt and he said it was all Arabs. But then when he went down into the south, a couple of cataracts south, he ran into black people. And he said he felt like he was back home at a family reunion back down in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> he said, man, he said he didn't want to go home. You know, he said he was laying back and everybody, the brothers would have tea and they eat dates and watch the, 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 the football game on, on TV. Football, the, the football, football that you yeah. play with your feet. Because yeah. in America, we play handball. We call it football. football. We, we carry it with our hands because I played college football in America. So, you know, you throw it, catch it and all that. But you play with your feet. The guys was watching the game that, and he said he had just like two more days there in southern Egypt, and he had to go back up to Cairo to catch flight. And the people asked him, he said, man, why you? He said, uh, you don't have to go back. You can stay. He, he said, but, man, I got a wife back home and some kids. So, yeah, I had to go back home. But he said if he didn't, he would have been talking to the government about, hey, uh, I'm staying. You know, so one of these days, so soon, uh, I had a younger gentleman here in this group that, that I met. He told me I better hurry up and come. He said, because you get too old, you won't be able to get around. So I better hurry up and get my passport and get the hell out of here so I could go see. Yeah. <laughs> the continent of Africa is a very beautiful country. But we don't continent. even call it continent. Yeah. It's a country. Yeah. We're just divided. Yeah. <laughs> but it is a country. Yeah. So it's just on the context of the world yeah. that we now say that the continent. Yeah. Uh, we're one people. Yeah. With different languages, but we're one people. Uh, it's a very welcoming continent. Yes. A lot of adventure. Coming to cultures, the diversification is what makes it beautiful. If you go to my country, we have 64 tribes. 64? 64. 64. Showcasing their own beautiful cultures, and everyone is welcoming. I know a lot of people talk about the war, uh -huh. which is political. Yes. Every country has Wars. that divide, yes. yes. But when it comes to the people themselves, without the politics, mm -hmm. people are very welcoming. Just like other countries that uh, do not have the war, mm -hmm. they're also welcoming. So when we go as tourists, we see a lot of beautiful things. Of course, the beautiful things are things that you, you observe. Yes. And people are so welcoming. 
that's so fun to watch and you have to go and see by yourself without being told that these people do not mean harm they just need to be politically aligned and to respect each other yes. not to have so much feeling that this is from the opposite side and have to treat it like an enemy we are brothers we have to solve things without picking arms so this is an advice to my people that we can discuss things we have to sit down and say that okay let this person lead from this political view or the ideology without picking arms yes yeah well man it's uh, quote, man it's just uh, an honor uh, to have a young dignitary like yourself here a professional man doing the things that you're doing and um I just hope and pray like I say over again I might sound like a broken record I want to see great success come from you man thanks man I, I know you got it in you I appreciate because it. it's already genetically in there you're the ones that build the pyramids yeah 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 you know a lot of pi- how many in South Sudan or southern Sudan uh how many pyramids are down there we do not have now we are uh, last time we went to mining uh-huh. uh we were shown the german husband uh-huh it's just like the ones we have in my village uh-huh. acting as tourist attraction here yeah in my village it is a normal house yeah so we built the pyramids for that condition uh but we have also our own things that identify us right now mm-hmm. so it well, has been a long history of yes. course it has been centuries yes. more than 2000 years mm-hmm. so of course evolution of the people yes. how things change, change. Yes. and adaptation to the environment happens so the southern part of course there's no much uh of those features uh if you go to sudan yes. there are also pyramids yes but the, the southern part was not that them and of course if you see the sudan was also uh black inhabitants so like khartoum mm-hmm. in my language it means two rivers meeting okay and it's not an arabic word it's a dinka word meaning that we are the natural or the first inhabitants of uh, because the white nile and the blue nile meet together in khartoum Oh. Yeah. Well, that's like Des Moines. Yeah. There's two rivers meeting here. The Des Moines River and the Raccoon River. Right. Yeah. And that's what Des Moines means, two rivers. Oh. In French. Uh, and I'm not a francophone. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. No, but but that's that's the meaning. And and Khartoum and Des Moines should have a a connection, huh? Yeah, sure. No, but but there's some problems going on in Khartoum right now. Like it's affecting great. us also. Yeah. Because I also have a family in Khartoum. Uh-huh. And when the war broke out, mm-hmm. of course, it caused uh, emotional damage to us. The life matters. Yeah, family. And of course, way uh, bullets were just coming from nowhere. You don't know where the enemy is, where the government is, where the, who is. It was uh, terrorizing. And we believe like they will be calm any time so that people go back to their normal lives uh kato means a lot to us because we are like sister family sister nations yes uh, a lot of moving back and forth yeah uh, between sudan and south sudan and even our oil passes through sudan so that it can be exported to other countries uh, that we're selling to so S- sudan is uh, are they a member of opec or not they're not okay but nigeria is a member of opec yeah, yeah. yeah. okay well so the oil producing countries here we go we have a lot i know hey you, you got a lot of all kinds of resources i know it's just wonderful we could have a, them utilized to your advantage and your country's advantage that's what and not for people to just exploit yeah. man it's so nice meeting you man a pleasure meeting you man enough respect Thank you. Then we here we go. What another episode. A Babylon makes the rules. A conversation with 
Mr. Clark Watt. Yes, indeed. Um, Mandela Washington fellow. You can always have that on your... Uh, My bad. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I, I'm just... I'm just enjoying myself, and and I mean, later, there's no way in the world I thought that I would ever be doing this and having this opportunity. But I'm just thankful that that we are, and uh, like I said, great success for you and your family, and your nation. Thank you. Yes, indeed. We pray for your nation. I mean it. I'm telling you, we pray for your nation for great success. Thank you. Because others over here are depending on you. Back Those home. who are here, uh-huh. please come back home, support home. Home is always at heart. And we know that you always have supported South Sudan and shouldn't stop. Believe in us, support us, and we'll, great, uh, we'll achieve great things together. That's all right. Yes. Respect. Respect. That's Babylon makes the rules. Everybody have a great weekend. Bye now.